Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at how to import files into Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So we're inside Jupyter Notebook and we're going to be looking at several different ways that we can import files into Ju uh, Python, excuse me. So we're going to be looking at how to import a text file, how to import with NumPy primarily, also with a text file, how to import with pandas, CSV file. Those are the main ones that we're gonna focus on. So let's go ahead and get started. So our first example is going to be a text file. So we don't really need any libraries for this example. So in order to do this, I need to make sure that you understand that in the examples that are being presented here, it is assumed that your text file is already inside your working directory. In other words, wherever your Jupyter Notebook file is saved, your text file should be there as well. Otherwise, you can, you can obviously import data from other places, but for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to be doing that. So let's go ahead and see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go, all right. So in line one here, we're creating an object called file. And so with this file, we're going to be making something using the open function. And then inside these quotes here, single quotes, the color is red. We're going to be importing this file.core.txt. And the mode equals R here means we're just going to read it. That's all we're doing. And so after we do that, we're going to create another object called text. And it's going to, of course, use will be created in line number one right here, file. And we're gonna add this little read uh, attribute or function. And then after that, we're going to close the file. And then, and then the next cell below that will actually print it. But first, let's go ahead and run this. All right, you can see nothing happened, but don't worry, the fun part is coming. Then right here, we're gonna print the text. You can see it. And now we press Control Enter, and you can see our text came out. Now the actual text doesn't matter. We're just, this is for demonstration purposes only, but this is just an output from R that I just saved as a text file. It's not that big of a deal. So don't get stuck on what you see here. This could be any kind of text. <clears throat> now in this next cell down below, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a shortcut for how to get this done a, a little bit faster here. So let me just show you the code first. So what's happening here is that we're using the word called with, it's like a special word inside Python. And so right here, all this is the same from the last time I used the open function. And then I'm going to do this as a file. And then now inside this line number two right here, I'm still doing print, but I'm kind of doing it with the file.read. So it's a little bit of a shortcut, it's a little bit faster for people who are more comfortable with using Python. So one thing I need to mention here is make sure you respect the white space. If you don't respect the white space, it will not print. So just to go back, if I do this, it will not work because everything after the, the colon here should be indented. So just press the indent and you can see now it works. So that's the power of what's going on right there. Now we're gonna do some importing with NumPy. And so NumPy is a slightly different approach and of course, there's many different ways to do these things when you're using Python, but we're just using NumPy this time. So I go ahead and show you the code here. So we have to import NumPy. That's one of many libraries that are available for use in Python. Next, we're gonna create an object called text. And so then we're going to pull a function from NumPy. That's why we have the NP here, then the dot. Load text is our star here. And then our data is gonna be sample.txt and the delimiter is gonna be separating by commas. This will make sense in a second. And then we print. So you can see right here that we have a very, very simple little array that came out. And NumPy is used primarily for numerical data. So if you wanna load a text file, it's probably gonna have to be numerical. Although I don't wanna say that too strongly but in this example, it has to be numbers. And also the delimiter is telling you how the numbers are separated. So it could be by tab, it could be by comma, as you can see right here, 
but you have to tell it how the values are separated in order for it to have the proper output. Now for, I think this is our last example, we're going to be showing you how to do this with pandas. And so with panda, we're going to be showing you how to import a CSV file. And so here's our code right here. So in the first line of this cell, we're going to be importing panda as PD. Then in the second line, we're doing, we're creating, we are creating an object called data and we're going to use PD dot re underscore CSV. This again is the name of our data set right here. Sample dot CSV. Remember this must be in your working directory. Otherwise you'll need the full address for your hard drive and the, for your, for your hard drive and whatever directory you have your data in. And then we're going to look at the first few lines by using data dot head. So, Go ahead and run this and you can see the output right there. And that's essentially it for this particular video. So um, to try to, con to conclude what we've talked about, we essentially looked at different ways you can import data into Python. You could do it without loading any libraries, that's possible. You can also import text files using NumPy and you can also load additional data other ways, for example, with panda as well and so again there's way more to this than what we have seen here but these are some basic common ways that you can bring data into python so that you can manipulate it for whatever purpose you may have so i want to thank you again for watching and listening my name is darren thomas i am the director of educational research techniques thank you again and take care